Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, weekly Edwards Insider in the 41st. We deliver the news about creation of our project Edwards. And as usual, Tokogawa-san, could you please open the session today? Yes. Oh, thank you, Oksana. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Hiro Tokugawa. Uh, now, I'm still continuing on the life of Shogun, what it was like to be Shogun. And uh, he is like naturally the only one. Uh, if we had two Shoguns at the same time, then that means civil war. Uh, luckily, that never happened. Uh, so now, uh, so he is the top samurai. And then there are the daimyo, the uh, local lords and uh, hatamoto uh, who work directly uh, for the Shogun in the Shogun, the Bakufu and uh, who can actually meet the shogun. Uh, so now, and you see, uh, so there is some kind of court life or social life there naturally, but it was not like in Bourbon France, no dancing there. Uh, music is the uh, one art form that never developed in Tokugawa Japan, at least uh, in my understanding. Uh, so what, what, what then what uh, took place was like an exchange of gifts and this is this was happening all the time. So all the daimyo, so they cover the all, all they come from all of Japan, and uh, there is always movement of people and goods and information between Edo and their own territory. So uh, like from the Sea of Japan, there is the land of Kaga, uh, which was ruled by the Maeda family. So every spring they send a big block of ice. From Kaga, or maybe it was in summer actually. So, because it snows a lot there and they compress it and keep it in a cave uh, until summer where it stays very cool. And then they deliver that wrapped in hay to Edo and they share the ice with the shogun. Okay. Or uh, well, salted salmon, maybe one, and then uh, oranges would be another. Uh, apples, if there were any, maybe there weren't. Uh, so all the specialties, uh, local specialties, would be delivered to Edo Castle, and the shogun may or may not have enjoyed them, as uh, there is a servant that eats everything before the shogun, so to make sure that there is no poison, but as a result, there is pitifully little left for the shogun to eat. And so receiving all these gifts, uh, the shogun, uh, in order to make Japan more civilized, will give something in return. And this was called uh, jifku, or the clothing of the time. So the shogun would take off uh, his clothes and uh, give it to whoever brought the gift to him. Uh, so some hatamoto, uh, the shogun's direct direct uh, underlings, who had some uh, very who achieved something very important, would be given this honor, and then other daimyo just as an exchange for their gift. Uh, but please, uh, or or well, be, uh, be assured, uh, the shogun does not actually take off his clothes. No, 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 he is not going to force you to wear his underwear. But he so the uh, Japanese clothes are multi layered, and more so in Tokugawa times, and especially for high class samurai. So uh, he would take off what would look like a robe uh, worn over his regular kimono and give them to you. So uh, for the daimyo, they would be very expensive. And then uh, the price uh, will go down according to rank. Uh, I once saw this uh, jifku uh, clothing of the time uh, in the collection uh, of the uh, Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. Well, actually, Maryland. And uh, and. This was so thin. So uh, this was really for a low, lower ranked samurai. And they probably wore it once, showed it to his family, uh, the samurai on the receiving end, and then uh, put it away. So that's how it was used. And on the other hand, many of the uh, daimyo and the upper ranking samurai would just, uh, tr well, try to monetize this. And then the Edo castle always needed this jifku, so they would buy it back at a discount. So the official in charge of this uh, would make uh, fictitious orders for a new kimono while uh, taking back the used kimono uh, given to the daimyo at a much discounted price and then pocketing the uh, difference for himself. And so there was, uh, well, in, uh, sometime, uh, something that happens everywhere in the official economy was taking place inside Edo Castle, uh, well, in relation to the circulation of high-end kimono. Okay, and I think that's enough for today. So see you next week. Uh, thank you very much, Tokugawa-san. It's, it's very interesting tradition. Like. Yes. 
something quite personal, like when yes. you give something yes. to your right. body, like as a present. Well, yeah. it's uh, well not not directly from the body, but it's yeah, yes, yes, but like you know that has like your energy yes. kind of you know <laughs> was part or of yourself. Yes. Uh, sorry, interesting. Thank you very much. Yep. And uh, JJ, could you please join us? Sure. Thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'd like to uh, update the progress of our development. So uh, we've just received some kind of teaser movie in which you, as if you were in Edo period, and then you can see the Edo castle and then the downtown of Edo, and also uh, some kind of uh, the park uh, besides Edo. It was really, really amazing. And we really are willing to you know, this show this uh, short teaser movie to certain, for example, like uh, the white, white, list, uh, white list holders or some of the holders of Zenyu or something, somehow within a couple of days, uh, we are thinking of that. Uh, anyway, it's really amazing. It, it's, it's, it's not like, a it used to be like Chinese-like design, you know, but it totally Japanese-like design currently. So it's much improved based on uh, Iehiro-san's instruction. I was so surprised and happy to see that. This is one update. And uh, secondly, we are trying to uh, define, you know, the uh, each class from uh, from Roni to Daimyo. So basically, we are going to have some 10, 10, you know, 10 different classes inside Edo bus. And then uh, all of the players can start at the very beginning of, uh, you know, Roni. But also we have to define, you know, male and a female. So we already received many types of avatars, which is half male and the other one is female. So we cannot say female is, you know, starting at, uh, at Roni because it's very strange for us. So how to make it more simple and how to make it more understandable is our next challenge. And then also um, uh, we've received always, you know, many, many in interesting ideas from Iehiro-san. Iehiro-san always told us like, um, you know, traditional culture in El Castle including uh, like Yoshua or something like that. And then uh, those ecosystem is basically working uh, in a quite sustain sustainable way. But if let's say like we say like, let's go to Yoshua or, you know, let's go to Yoshua to be the queens or something, it's gonna be something problem, I guess. So we need to make it more attractive and then make it more 20, 21st century wise, but it's still like based on the Edo, Edo culture. It's also our next challenge. So we are gonna have 10 classes for male and then female as well. And then uh Yeho san's advice is so interesting. For example, male can be female, female, like uh, you know, uh we call it Joso. And <laughs> you know, if male artists uh gets Joso, then you know their career is gonna be accelerated or something like that. That's basically amazing and interesting idea. So we need to implement those those ideas into our Edubus as well. So uh, in terms of creative and uh, space, I think uh, development schedule is ongoing. So which means uh, first product test is gonna be launched by the year end, means uh, this December. So after that, you can experience inside Edubus and you can see the castle, Edu castle, real one from the park side, or you can see the park or, you know, go see and go around anyway. So I think it's uh, definitely um, amazing experience for all of you. So next challenge is uh, we need to, you know, implement and define the principles in gaining fields based on uh, Ihiro San's idea and also based on uh, Edo culture. We are gonna make it uh, realistic as much as possible, but maybe certain ways, you know, the express uh, way is gonna it's gonna be a bit different from the uh, real Edo culture. That's that, that's our next challenge anyway. Uh, stay tuned. We are gonna do our best. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, JJ and uh, Mitsushi. Uh, hello. How how you been doing this week? Yeah, great. As you know, uh, the World Cup is held, and a lot of a lot of people get gathered in street and or enjoy watching the match in sports bar or something. But I think in the near future, people will be able to have that experience in metaverse as well. People will join the same cyberspace and share experience together. 
I think similar kind of phenomenon will also happen in Ediverse as well. It doesn't have to be a large event like a World Cup or Olympic. It could be like a small event. We will have a very like small event in Ediverse and people will share the same experience together simultaneously in the same space. I think that's going to be a wonderful uh, you know, uh, experience for, for a lot of people because you don't have to physically go to the same place. You can join uh, the metaverse from uh, remotely from different places. I think that kind of uh, experience will be sort of common in the near future. That's what I'm thinking right now, especially things like World Cup or uh, Olympic, that kind of large event. A lot of people you know, want to get connected with the uh, you know, same supporters. I think uh, Edoverse or, or metaverse in general, will accelerate that kind of experience in the near future. That's what I'm thinking uh, this is. Uh, moreover, as a project, we've got a lot of messages or a lot of like contact from different like, corporations or you know, uh, f- uh, potential partners these days. Uh, so I-, I saw some sort of interest in uh, ideas or suggestions from other uh, projects and corporations. So I think that, that sort of partnership will be also accelerated as well. And so, that's, so I see a lot of good harbingers uh, for Ediverse as well. Uh, I also saw some sort of uh, active chats in uh, SNS, Telegram, Twitter, and Discord as well. So as uh, you know, general users get more interested in uh, Metaverse in general, I think the presence of Ediverse will also uh, increase as well. I think the uh, project is now going very going well. That's what I'm thinking right now. So my comment is very short today, but that's uh, all from me today. Thank you very much. So I'd like to give a baton to the next speaker. Thank you very much, Mitsushi. And yes, next speaker, a new face in our group. Uh, Martin, could you please uh, introduce yourself to our audience? Yes, I'd be delighted to. Uh, my name is Martin Webb. I'm originally from the UK, but I moved to Japan in the year 2000. Mm-hmm. And I've been uh, living in Tokyo uh, yeah, I guess over 20 years now. Um, I began as a journalist um, working for the Japan Times. I then moved into a PR agency. I then went to work for a, a brand under the umbrella of the Louis Vuitton group. Uh, I was there for five years. And then I founded my own company, which is a PR agency named Communion in 2014. So for the past eight years, we've been specializing in uh, high-end luxury brands, fashion brands. We've worked with many prestigious brands, including Cartier and Ferrari. And uh, yes, here I am, very, very um, excited to be part of this revolutionary new project. Yes, thank you very much. I didn't know that you had like a very luxurious background. (laughs) Nice to have you with us. (laughs) Please. It is my pleasure. So today, there were a couple of things that I wanted to raise, um, just as sort of warnings that have come from other players within the industry. The first of which is uh, FTX. Obviously, uh, you know, this has been a, a big scandal within the industry, and it highlights um, the kind of risks that are involved with, um, you know, this um, new pioneering uh, economy. So um, I think that, you know, going forward, we need to emphasize our um, credibility, our integrity and the strength of our corporate governance, um, the rigorousness of our compliance programs and just make sure that everyone knows exactly how solid um, the Edoverse really is. And I think um you know, we have an extremely strong foundation there. That's something that can um, give uh, reassurance to consumers who maybe have been burned or at least are concerned about what happened um, with um, FTX. Uh, we, you know, their their tokens, obviously, the FTT is, is uh, dropped by 90% in value and so on and so forth. So um, I think that is one of the great strengths of the Edoverse. You know, we have an extremely... A strong and trustworthy um, platform here. So this is going to give us a great advantage in, in the future. And I think from my uh, communications point of view, it's also going to be one of the things that we'll have to be talking about um, a lot in the future, given that um, the current um, environment um, you know, in, in the crypto space it, it is one of kind of mistrust. And, and I think you know, a lot of people are are very skeptical about a lot of these projects. So um, that puts us in a great position. And I'm very positive about that. Next, um, 
also just from the zeitgeist, uh, recently a lot of people have been pointing out that Decentraland, which is the, the biggest uh, metaverse run by Facebook, only has um, something like 600 um, daily active wallets um, and that or unique wallets um, per day. So this means that um, it is pretty much an unmitigated failure at this point. And a lot of um, observers in the space are pointing this out. Um, I think um, the quality of the experience is much lower than what we are aiming for. So I think, you know, we can blast them out of the water. Um, but this also, you know, is a kind of a warning perhaps that um, metaverses that launch without full functionality um, tend to scare off users and then they don't come back. So having, um, you know, avatars with no legs and so on and so forth and these these weak graphics that look like they're from, you know, a decade ago, really, I think, put off a lot of users and they don't they don't want to come back. So um, this is something else that I think, you know, as time goes by, we'll see how they try to um, mitigate that um, problem that they've got. I think that they're facing a, a chicken and egg problem right now. So, um, you know, lack of users means other users don't want to join, other users don't want, want to join because there's fewer um, active wallets and so on and so forth. So um, this is, uh, yes, a, a, a warning tale for us to to um, be cognizant of. You know, if if the biggest market player can have such a spectacular failure, and we need to find out why and make sure that that um, never happens to, to Ediverse. As I said, you know, we have a cooler experience, so it shouldn't be that hard. Um, but yes, a, another piece of news that we should be be aware of. I'm sure, you know, um, Gen and Mitsushi are extremely, um, you know, well informed about these these issues. But um, yeah, something that uh, the whole team should be aware of. Great. Thank you very much. It's a great lesson for us to follow, like, from now on. And uh, the last, uh, Dominique, could you please sum up today's? Okay. Uh, thank you, Martin. And just, uh, and also, uh, welcome aboard. Um, just, it was very, uh, actually very sensible, uh, the warnings just to the, the industry and uh, out of us too. And the FTX was a pretty much centralized by one person called a sound bank of read. Um, yeah, he was a genius, but you know, uh, our basic concept is decentralized. So it means that of course, we have a Mr. Tokugawa's. Yeah, it's the nineties, uh, uh, the shogunate uh, of a Tokugawa family. Um, um, but the, you know, the Mr. Tokugawa is a symbol of uh, uh, Erobus. Uh, it's not actually, you know, controlled everything. And then we actually are aiming for a DAO uh, community means that that we have uh, uh, the many people actually, you know, they're attending, participating in the, in these communities then and creating this uh, uh, ecosystem. Um, and then uh, we actually um, at, at the first stage of uh, uh, the, those kind of creations, we needed some readership, but you know, we need a kind of uh, uh, several uh, people's uh, readership that we just, you know, that having that uh, and uh, they're getting the ideas that that you just you know, making some conclusions and then just making taking an action. So um, uh, anyway, that anyway, that we are we are targeting, yeah, uh, DAO, yeah. That's actually we we are just uh, some future. Um, of course, the decentralized decentralized uh, uh, the. Uh, Notice that actually made by uh, Martin is, is very interesting because that quality is really bad actually, but in the still that you know the market cap is very high, and then still the uh, Airbus is very early stage of the project. Is the our Zeni market cap is very very tiny small. It's just starting from just just yeah digging up and then the, the, we we actually are on a very the good development stage that and then we saw um, that. Um, uh, uh, the progress of a 3D the space that has the Gigi mentioned that actually that was really realistic landscape of uh, Edo Castle and also Edo uh, uh, Daimyo mansions and all the street and the trees everything it's it's really uh, it's realistic and then we're going to just get into the avatar and then avatar will be created by of course the Sequin an American company but you know they have a very Edo style outfits. 
male and the female. That's very cool. And then I'm very looking forward, just, you know, as avatars, just I'm getting into the Edelbars. Probably I think alpha version is coming at the uh, end of December this year. And then somebody might see, yeah, and then check it. So, and then uh, we are now at the end of November that, you know, December uh, monthly insiders is, is approaching. It's, it will be held on uh, 12th of December. And that, that'll be a very big event because we might see that since then be avatar, but then at the same time that, you know, what we uh, have to do is that um, uh, land NFT cell in uh, Ottoman areas and also Katana NFT cell. That'll be very, very uh, attractive just for everybody yeah, to just get the really art uh, or art style of a Katana and an NFT that, that you can just make some of the games in it. And then um, we are now uh, correcting the white list uh, uh, of uh, uh, your or, or, or in, uh, Ethereum's uh, uh, wallet address. Um, because actually, you know, if you want to buy the Katana or NFT land, that please just um, the, register your address and then um, them just attending that the 12th December session uh, to buy things. And then you will find that the launch part and then you can just get in there the two parts. And and then uh, we uh, have to announce that, that we had a third uh, exchange uh, listing was completed. There was a Mexi, which is a much bigger exchange than that. Actually, we did that in the before there too. But you know, a Bitmart was the fast exchange that in the volume is very high, and then and the people just are trading, and that's good actually. And then uh, we actually well diversified just in this exchange that, that we saw that FTX, yeah, the example, yeah. And then um, now uh, we are also today a very, very happy news that we have to, we, yeah, we can tell because of our, our partnership company, uh, Edo All United, which is now do uh, a company limited subsidiary. Um, we do the the Edo All United is that a soccer team is a, uh, in in the Tokyo metropolitan cities, and then they uh, uh, now it's decided to just in a joint uh, Edo bus, and then uh, Edo bus soccer stadium in uh, Tsukiji area will be their home stadium. So that Edo All United was promoted to the first divisions in the, in the Tokyo League. So that is great. Of course, that is actually the position is still that is J7, but you know, uh, they're targeting J1 in the futures, just in the weather at of our studios. That'll be, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward. And then the final, finally, that and I, I want to just stress one thing about our total. Uh, Edobus promotion to the local authorities or local just in the people. Um, because you know, Edo City, Odahan is, is a nationwide the local, uh, the all the Japan uh the regional related uh daimyo mansions uh was actually gathered. So we have a, a uh, we are sparing some land NFT for everybody. Uh, and then we can just promote the all the, uh, all the regions in Japan and the nationwide at the same time. And then we might just uh, and create a game for the uh, Tokugawa Hidden Treasure uh, in all the uh, cities in, in the real Japan. And then, uh, or you can just find something very special QR code or maybe the the signs in a regional city that that we just might some uh, uh, just making some other sort of. Uh, the map on this, and then uh, it, once as you find that, that you can get treasure uh, just in the Edelbars. That'll be very exciting. So uh, we're gonna uh, uh, just uh, announce that the whole that sort of the content of the game the, in the very near future. So that's all. And uh, we, we, many things are happening in December for Edelbars, and then um, I hope that that we can just enjoy together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominique, for a wonderful news. It's it's great. Like especially now when it's uh, like the World Cup is going on and yep. yes, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and, and then, and then K, uh, Mr. Keisuke Honda is just a part of a the very important function in the uh, in the mass communications uh, in the, uh, yeah in uh, um, this this World Cups and then um, that uh, the Edo United General Manager is 
to the Mr. Keske Hondas. And then yeah. hope that they, yeah, he can just, yeah, I, I hope that his team is going to be J1 in the future, that, you know. Yeah. And cool. I hope that the World Cup suck of the pro soccer players is coming up from the team. Yeah. Oh, maybe in the future they will have like a uniform with adverse logos and oh, yeah. designs. Yeah. I hope, I hope oh, it will be very beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, again, Martin, welcome to our team. It's great to have you here with us. Thank and you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We will meet next week. Goodbye.